We hope, we pray, we dream, but sometimes our favorite hero is a huge miss. Let's commiserate about intelligent systems' poor design decisions and talk about the most disappointing units of the last generation. These are our past winners, but who will wear the crown in 2024? Now, we're not going to talk about the worst performing units. No one is surprised when an instant demote doesn't hold up to the brand new emblem hero. We're talking about when expectations and hype were so high that everyone assumed they would change the game on release. Think about the excitement of Brave Tiki and the huge letdown when we finally got her. But before we start, let me know in the comments who is your biggest disappointment of this last year? The future. Legendary heroes are some of the most anticipated units in the game, and Corrin is a really popular character. So surely IS would get this right. What we have here is a lot of text with loads of effects and a new Divine Vein water effect that is actually pretty good. But that stat line is terrible. 27 base defense is really, really bad. But maybe this is okay. Maybe the matchups aren't as bad as I'm thinking they're gonna be. Here's the thing. Somehow they're worse. This is a brand new unit going up against the usual score bots in Arena. There aren't really any additional buffs. You're not getting additional mythic effects or anything like that. And this unit just gets trounced. This is all in the enemy phase. And the only one that Corrin beats is Murr, who is not a player phase unit by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, even Dual Chrom, and I know that's close, but Duo Krom is two years old at this point. I mean, take that in, but Corrin just gets smashed. The weapon triangle advantage is in his favor with Sharena and Edelgarden still can't get it done. And Golvig doesn't really have the best damage output and it doesn't matter. This unit gets trashed. When we look at the other fire legendaries, I mean, the, the first thing that stands out is this is kind of a mid group just in general, but Look at the fact, these are in order. The last one that we got was also an infantry green dragon who has better support than Corrin. So while she doesn't stand up to every threat, at least she can give piercing to her support ally. And I know that doesn't sound like a huge thing. A lot of newer units are getting that. But if you talk about in the context of arena, giving that to either your older legendary bonus or God help you if you have to use a GHB or Tempest Trial unit, that is huge. That is such a great support, and this unit is honestly just not as good. Looking at the rankings, this is a brand new legendary, and he's dropped all the way to tier two. Summoners, that is a terrible start for a hero that is a lot of people's favorite and is very expensive at that. If you can at all help it, Pick another unit for your fire core. But let's see how they did with a Fire Emblem Heroes favorite. How shameful. Rearmed units hold so much value and expectation, and Reinhardt is one of the favorites of Fire Emblem Heroes. Fire Emblem Heroes is what made this unit popular. So, I, I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? The first is Arcane Thunder, and this is just okay, but Where's the Brave effect? I mean, that is what Reinhardt is known for in every single one of his iterations, and they utterly chickened out on that. Honestly, Brave is not as strong as it used to be. This would not have been a game-breaking thing to have a Brave Arcane Tome. But then we get to Thunder Fist, and this has the Brave effect in here, but it has a worse condition than the original Gen 1 Reinhardt. That's ridiculous. Let's take a look at the other rearmed and attuned units. And honestly, this year has been fantastic for them. If you look at this, there's been 13 of them and probably two have been misses depending on how you count that. But Soth and Ganunga Gap are, are very hard to use. Most of these other units are very usable as both units and fodder factories. So they know how to make a good rearmed unit. They've done it before. 
let's take a look at how far they missed on this. And this is his best build. With Arcane Euphoria, you have to have a different Arcane Tome on this weapon to get the best build. That is nuts. What this comes down to is the additional true damage you get from this weapon, but still, Summoners, this is crazy that you have to use an older Arcane Tome, and Speed Creep has already passed this unit by. To calm us down, I have here an old school Reinhardt build, and I want us all to just bask in the glory of my anima defense Reinhardt that would just absolutely destroy things. And it, it makes my heart happy. I'm hoping for a good refine someday. But let's talk about the death of a player favorite. Now you stop that. Okay, I'll be the first to admit this one is a little unfair because objectively this is a good unit and there weren't exactly huge expectations for Heather herself. So what went wrong here? And that is Ruse 4. Reddit, Discord, Twitter, they went crazy over this. This was the thing that would kill Bridal Catria for good. The hype was enormous, but I want us to look at the preference weapons from the last couple of banners. What you'll notice is the counter brave effect clauses that each one of these has, and this would start appearing immediately after that Ruse 4 fairly commonly. So there was already a plan to have soft counters for Catria. Keep in mind at this point, we were already seeing flat and percent damage reduction just go crazy. And we were already seeing some big cracks in the Catria ball armor. But shortly after we got Ruse 4, we got Mythic Lumera, who has Ruse 4, but also has Divine Vein Stone, which protects against AoEs. And then we got Fallen Lumera, who can be blessed on any season. Then I want you to look at some notable B skills that we got from this last generation. And these are incredible, and I would rather have these on most units as opposed to Ruse 4. So to answer the question, did Bridal Catria kill Heather? The fact is she was already headed that way, and this was just really heavy handed and a wasted summon. I failed them. The hype around Brave units is always enormous. I mean, these are fan favorites because they were voted by us. This one was also really well received. Folks really liked Brave Robin, and while they didn't pick him as the absolute best out of the bunch, everyone thought he would have some longevity because he's a supportive nuke. Supportive nukes are one of the best archetypes in the game. Rally Spectrum is a fantastic support. But here's the problem. This unit can't kill anything. These are just your standard leftovers after your carry has kind of taken over things. And he fails against all of them except for Note. Medius, Fomortis, Freyr, Nurgle, all of these are standard units that will be left over and you hope to be able to clean them up with other units in your team. And Robin just fails at it. Then we talk about Rally Spectrum, which at its core is trying to get you specials more often. The issue is we have so many different units and different skills and different supportive things that help you get those right now. You have a lot of choices. These are just a few of them. This is not comprehensive, but I mean, these are some great skills, including some Robins here, which brings up the worst point that I have. After all that, Robin not being able to hit hard enough and Rally Spectrum not being unique, we get the actual Robin that we wanted in the young version and he does everything that the Brave was supposed to. He can actually kill things. He still has Rally Spectrum. He can still run all the supportive skills that you want. What that means is that Brave Robin's best build is staring at you right here. Stacking HP, using even pulse tie, and being a Rally Spectrum bot. And I'll be honest, you can pair this unit with Ike and do fairly well. Just understand that that is a valuable support slot that you could have someone else there that does a lot more. But let's take a second to honor poorly designed refines. Too brittle, too weak. Fallen Leon is such a fan favorite, and this isn't a terrible refine, but 
Honestly, Cancel Affinity and Triangle Adept in 2024, really? I, I have some bigger complaints about this because this is actually working against your team. Understand that when you're an Omni tank, the big thing you do to get around these units is to literally get around them. You take units and warp or get additional movement and get around them and attack them from that perspective. This unit gives Triangle Adept to the opponent, but doesn't give Cancel Affinity to the rest of his team. So in effect, you are helping the opponent take out your team. This is so amazingly short-sighted, and I, I'm flashing up a build right here. Like, this is a good build. If you got this in the Holoforms, you're probably happy with this unit, but this doesn't come close to Emblem Ike or any of the top tier Omni tanks right now. That speaks to a bigger problem of older units right now, but that's the topic for a completely different video. It's time to really rankle some feathers with our number one worst unit of the year. This was inevitable. It's a three action anima mythic that will surely solo your entire team and make Aether Raids completely unplayable. Also, it's Golveg, who is popular for reasons. Anyway, she has two really big problems. The first is she can't kill things. This is kind of a common theme with Golveg in general, but the damage output is never just huge. It's not really the focus. But the other issue with this is she has trouble staying alive. Everyone has piercing right now. And look at those defenses. Her bulk is paper thin. So she just crumbles against most tanks right now, but, but that alone isn't enough to get you in the top spot. We need to dig even deeper. I want you to look at the other Golvegs that we got this past year. First off, take in that we got three Golvegs this past year. The first one we have Brave, and this is an AoE Gale Force unit that is still very usable because of flyer mobility and how great it is and how well she pairs with Bridal Embla. This unit is very, very good. And then you have Summer Golveg, who has four actions and is a duo unit and is incredible, especially paired with Emblem Celica. The fact that this unit is blessable is just huge because you can use her everywhere. Then we have Golveg, who can't stay alive long enough to use her extra actions. Essentially what we have here is an offensive unit shoehorned into a defensive role. For any of you who have been fans of this game for a long time, this is current day Sothis. If you want to see added proof of that, just use her in Chaos Season on offense. She's incredible, but we need to look at the rankings. And this unit is six months old and is Again, already in that dreaded tier two spot, but look who's above her. I, Freyr and Mira, obviously those are very good, but honestly, I'd rather have Famortis in his current form just because of the beast seal. This unit ranks down next to Arvul because both of these units are okay at killing things. But again, these mythic units are really expensive. Just look at PM1 who spent 600 orbs and couldn't get an Emblem Celica. Now I know there are good builds for Golvig. I'm showing one right here, but this is a lot of investment. And even then this unit just struggles. IS has to stop putting these offensive mythics on defense. It's just not very nice to us. Here is the final list. And I want you to remember if your unit is up here, it doesn't mean they're unusable. It just means IS should have put some more thought into this. I'm gonna throw up here the playlist for all of my top fives. In there are the past top five worst. Definitely go check those out, see how the game has evolved and see who made the list in the years past. Members, you are amazing. Discord members, thank you so much for your help in making this list. Take care and schedule an appointment with your fail just real soon.